that, I'll hand it over to Alan. Thank you, Emma. Uh, welcome everyone to the Corteva AgriScience uh, Roundtable. And the title of this roundtable is uh, on the screen, uh, Raising the Bar on Insect uh, Control in Cereal, Pea, and Lentil. And when we say insect control, what we are uh, referring to is a, is a product that was newly put on the market this year uh, called Lumavia CPL. Um, so just a quick introduction. I work for Coteva AgriScience as the market development specialist for all seed applied technologies in Western Canada and Southern Ontario. And as part of that job, I am responsible for launching new uh, seed applied technology products in um, cereal, pea, lentil, soybean, corn, uh, all of those crops that, that we deal with in, in Western Canada and in Ontario and Quebec. So one of the, the, the real exciting things that I've been able to do uh, in the last year and a half or so is work with this product called Lumavia CPL. And I'm here today to talk to you guys about this. So over the next, uh, I'm just gonna try and switch slides here. Over the next half hour or 40 minutes, what I'd like to have as an outcome for all of us uh, attending the round table today is that we will understand what we need to know about Lumavia CPL, uh, insecticide seed treatment. And really that falls into four different categories of information. First off, what is Lumavia CPL? What insect pest uh, does uh, Lumavia CPL control? Why should Lumavia CPL be on my radar, either as an, an end user, a, a grower in Western Canada, or a, uh, an agronomist or a retailer? And probably the last and the most important piece for, for people that are actually you know, treating seed on farm or a, you're a custom applicator, how do I apply this product? Uh, what is the packaging and what are the, how can it be applied? What crops can it be applied onto? And, and is there anything special that I need to be prepared for to, uh, to apply them via CPL? So I have about 30 minutes or so of, of presentation material. I see there's already one, uh, one chat or one question maybe on the, on the chat. Oh yeah, I see that's not, uh, not, not uh, meant for me. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll just head into the material, I guess. So regarding the insecticide seed treatment market in Western Canada, uh, up until this year, cereal, pea and lentil insecticide seed treatments were all group four neonic products. And really they, they could be narrowed mostly to three active ingredients, thiamethoxam, imidacloprid and clothiandin. And and when it came to, to target pests like wireworms, really the, the best activity seemed to come from, from products like Cruiser. Some people use Stress Shield as well for it and Sombrero. Um, the mode of action of these, these products were that they would temporarily stop wireworm, wireworms from feeding on uh, crops by affecting the, the central nervous system of the, of the worm, of the wireworm. So uh, you've got your crop starting to germinate and the, the uh, wireworm uh, eats some of that, that, that root system of the crop. There's active ingredient uh, in that root system and the central nervous system of the, of the wireworm becomes affected. They become you know, dizzy or disoriented and they lose interest in feeding for a temporary period of time. And then uh, at, at, at some point in the future, they, they will be, they, they're not, killed by any means next year they, they will be back and, and available to feed on, on whatever crop you you sowed there last year. So uh, I've been involved in the uh, uh, crop protection industry and, and we, we of course farmed as well you know uh, 30 years and back before the year 2000 or so we never really thought that much about wireworms because there was a there was really good control measures in place. Uh, lindane was the active ingredient that most people use for wireworm control. And that lindane product actually kept the populations of wireworms under control. It would, it would uh, you know, actually kill the wireworms and not allow the, 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 the pest load to multiply in the soil. Um, it was either in 2000 or 2001 that lindane as an active ingredient in Canada was banned due to safety concerns. And ever since that point, uh, we haven't really had any 
insecticide seed treatment that was able to reduce the population of wireworms uh, in the soil in Western Canada. And, and that has been a huge concern. Um, the products that are out there now, they're, they're, some are only registered for application by certified custom seed treaters. Others can be applied on farm by the end user. Uh, wireworm is the main target insect for a lot of these uh, insecticide seed treatment products. Um, if you've got cutworms in your cereal, pea and lentil, that is not really able to be controlled up until this year by a seed treatment. Uh, if you had a cutworm problem, you had to wait until your crop was thinning and you were seeing bare spots in the field and then go out and do a rescue treatment with a uh, foliar applied insecticide, which is something that nobody wants to do. Um, there are sweet products available on the market that combine both insecticide seed treatments, ISTs, and fungicide seed treatments, or FSTs, in the same purchase. So, so if you're buying a, a Raxel Pro or a, 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 a Vibrance Quattro, uh, um, a Cruiser Vibrance Quattro, um, those, those products have both the insecticide seed treatment and the fungicide seed treatment together. These products are either co-packaged or pre-formulated. And by co-packaged, uh, for example, sometimes Cruiser comes in a separate bottle in a, in a case, you add it to the fungicide and you, and, and you treat that, uh, those products together. In, in certain cases, uh, they're all in one formulations, they're available in a keg and away you go. We received uh, feedback from Western Canadian producers, uh, you know, territory managers, uh, marketing, um, you know, our 1-800 line, that sort of thing. Growers told us that they really needed a new insecticide seed treatment in cereal pea and lentils. In canola, uh, a lot of their concerns were being taken care of by products like uh, Helix Vibrance, Prosper, and Lumiderm. Especially on the cutworm side, Lumiderm did a really good job of, of, uh, of controlling cutworms. But really, we were falling short on the, in the cereal pea and lentil ground. Specifically, growers requested a product that would actually reduce pest populations in the soil, both wireworms and cutworms. A product that could be used in multiple crops and was easy to apply. Something that was safe for applicators or growers to apply on farm, had low use rates, easy to apply, like, like not a huge amount of volume that would mix into you know, other fungicide seed treatments and, and be safe on inoculants it's in pulses. And the other piece that was very important was that in addition to it being uh, new products being safe to the applicator or to the farmer, it needed, the, whatever product was introduced needed to be safe to non-target pests. So really there's, there's a real uh, a good emphasis on protecting pollinators and making sure that nothing that we do, that, we're, that we are sustainable in agriculture and that we don't uh, have any negative impact on especially pollinators uh, uh, through any of the products that we apply. So Lumavia CPL, standing for cereal pea and lentil, is a brand new mode of action insecticide. It is the very first group 28 anthranolic diamide seed treatment that protects establishing cereal pea and lentil crops from wireworm, cutworm, armyworm, and pea leaf weevil larvae. This is, is really brand new and, and revolutionary in the sense that, that uh, this is the first non-group 4 seed treatment that's been uh, introduced. And it really is the first one that, that, that controls cutworm, ar armyworm, and pea leaf weevil. And it actually reduces the uh, populations of wireworm in the soil. Lumavia CPL was actually registered in the spring of 2019. We weren't ready for it to be, be registered in the sense that we thought that we would have another year of uh, consultation before it was registered. But in late April of 2019, the, the, the product would, became registered by the, by the uh, PMRA and we, we were ready to go. And what that really did was allowed us to expand out our demonstration program for 2019 and be completely ready to launch for the spring of 2020, which we did. Lumavia CPL may be treated on farm or through commercial seed treatment facilities. Uh, people ask me, you know, what, what do I prefer? How do, how do I prefer that it's treated? And I think it is really up to the grower uh, as to what their, their comfort level is with, with uh, treating seed. A lot of farmers I know are concerned about treating seed because it's easy to make an error and, and apply too much uh, seed treatment to the seed. 
uh, affecting flowability problems. Also, uh, if, if you don't have a, a reliable way of controlling rate with uh, uh, seed treatments, it can become expensive and more expensive than it needs to be. There's a lot of commercial seed treating equipment, both uh, static systems uh, that, 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 that you see across Western Canada and some mobile systems that are out there treating hundreds and hundreds of thousands of bushels of uh, cereal pea and lentil seed. The other piece is that Lumavia CPL is very safe to applicators and to non-target pests. It's not even uh, classified as a dangerous good, which is, is rare for an insecticide. Uh, it has a very, very low, low toxicity rating. So it, it's very safe to use, uh, it, it's safe to store, and, and actually can be, it, it, because of its safety rating, it can be shipped through the mail. So uh, we're very, very happy to see that, that level of low toxicity. The active ingredient uh, in Lumavia CPL is a product called chlorantranilaprole, and that group 28 product is in the same family as Lumiderm, which is, the active ingredient is cyanotranilaprole. They are both anthranilic diamides uh, in, in, their, in their chemical classification. The mode of action of group 28, and, and specifically Lumavia CPL, is that it impacts insect behavior by impairing muscles. And that is completely different than the existing uh, uh, insecticide seed treatments on the market in that the other products will temporarily impair uh, the nervous system of the, of the insect pest after eating treated plant material. Um, they don't stop feeding right away. They're only temporarily uh, uh, disinterested in eating and they will come back to, to feed more either later in the year or next year. The hope is, uh, when people use these products, is that uh, the, the insects will, will stop eating for long enough for the crop to fully establish and get ahead uh, of the insects and not have um, um, you know, damage from insect feeding. And that has had variable results over the years. The packaging for Lumavia CPL is a very low rate. Uh, it comes in a four uh, jug case. Each, case. each jug is three and a half liters. Each three and a half liter jug will treat 320 bushels of peas or lentils. So that case will treat uh, 1,280 bushels of, of wheat or lentils. For peas, uh, the, the, the rate is a little bit higher at 64 mil per 100 uh, kg of seed. So, uh, you know, about 50% higher rate. Uh, and the reason is for pea leaf weevil, we require a higher rate to control that insect than um, armyworm, uh, wireworm, and uh, cutworm. So I've just got a video here because we were registered a little bit earlier than we thought we would last year, we had a lot of opportunity to do uh, uh, demonstrations. We did a, a demonstration program across Western Canada last year with 25 sites. And I was able to, to go out into the field starting uh, on April the 10th and start treating seed and seeing exactly how the product uh, acted and responded uh, in cold weather conditions, in, uh, in all different types of uh, treating systems. And I just wanted to show you, this, this, this was done in May, early in May of 2019. It was about five degrees Celsius out that day. And we were applying uh, Lumavia CPL plus Insure Pulse onto some lentil seed. And uh, in that cool weather, sometimes seed treatments can be a little bit thicker and harder to pour and that sort of thing. And I just wanted to show you what the uh, Lumavia CPL looks like coming out of the jug at five degrees on a seven o'clock on a cool morning in May. Um, so you can see that it's kind of a milky formulation and it pours very, very easily uh, into, into the jug. That is a three and a half liter jug there. And you can sort of see that it poured right in on top of the insure, uh, insure pulse. And uh, with a little bit of shaking, it was ready to go into the, into the applicator. So our key selling messages and our key value messages for Lumavia CPL is this product is going to, to provide outstanding protection against key early season insect pests for the target crops. It provides seedling protection and really prevents the buildup of pest populations. The other piece that we are seeing through an extensive research and demonstration program is better seed germination and excellent crop stand establishment, uh, maximizing yield potential. 
This is a brand new mode of action and it will control pest resistance to other insecticides. And again, it offers a favorable environmental profile. It does not bioaccumulate in the soil. It does not harm non-target pests. And it really, um, it really is a completely new technology and mode of action for cereal pea and lentil. And you can see the target pests on the right-hand side there. In Eastern Canada and the United States, Lumavia is used in, in corn uh, as well. And, and you can see at the bottom, that's a, that's a grub that uh, is uh, Lumavia CPL is, or Lumavia active ingredient is used to control uh, uh, these grubs in, in Eastern Canada and in the States. So a comparison chart to, uh, showing exactly what our control level is compared to some of the other uh, products in the Western Canadian market. So we're comparing Lumavia CPL here to Cruiser 5FS or thiamethoxam and Stress Shield, which is a made of clawfruit. And for wireworms, what we're saying is that we've got a stronger control level there. The, the added plus sign indicates that we do have some mortality, but also what it says is that we are stopping feeding uh, faster uh, with Lumavia CPL than the other two products are. The other two products do not control cutworm or armyworm at all, whereas Lumavia CPL has a very, very strong control rating on cutworms and armyworms. Key leaf weevil as well is stronger control with Lumavia CPL than the other two products. So just to dig a little bit deeper into that, what does the wireworm control rating mean? Competitive products, not Lumavia CPL, attack the central nervous system of wireworms and, and other insects, and they temporarily stop feeding. When those uh, ins uh, insecticide seed treatments are given a control rating by the PMRA and, and a label is granted, with that, what, the, what really the researchers are looking for is a cessation of feeding and for X number of days until the crop is able to get ahead of the, of the insect pest. Lumidia CPL is a little bit different in that uh, within a minute, um, the Lumavia CPL treated plant material when it's consumed by, by a wireworm uh, causes uh, the beginning of paralysis to happen. And pretty soon the, the after eating, uh, as in you know, within that minute or so, the, the wireworms are completely unable to eat anymore. And they are uh, what we would call moribund in the soil. And that means that they are, are, are not moving around, they're not able to eat anymore, and they're not able to, to, to do subsequent damage to the crop. And if any of you guys have ever looked at wireworms and scouted wireworms in the field, especially untreated areas, what you would see in high population areas, you, you dig up as uh, the, in the seed row uh, as the crop is starting to emerge. And as soon as wireworms become um, exposed to uh, the bright light and the heat and, uh, and the air, they're, they're, they're constantly wriggling and they're trying to get back uh, under shelter. They do not like being exposed like that. When you are digging in the soil and you're able, able to find uh, wireworms that have been consuming plant material that, that was treated with Lumavia CPL, uh, they're almost uh, completely still. They don't try to squirm out of the way. They're, they're you know, basically uh, paralyzed and unable to eat. So we talked about how the growth of, of wireworms has really exploded since the year 2000 when Lindane was, uh, was taken off the market. And, and this shows, uh, this map shows uh, an Ag Canada, Ag Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada study that was done from 2004 to 2017 um, by a researcher named Van Herk um, and others. And, and it shows some of the wireworm hotspots in Western Canada. And, and Using this map, this is where we decided to focus our demonstration program in 2019 on and where we'd really planned on, on launching the product in 2020. We went out uh, and, and like I said, started applying uh, 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 Lumavia CPL demonstrations in April, but we were also able to work with uh, agronomists and farmers all across uh, that, that heavy wireworm zone in Southern Alberta and Saskatchewan. And really, I saw some things about wireworms that I was, I was really, you know, really shocked about. And I had no idea that the population was that high. Uh, I knew that there was wireworms out there and I knew that they were growing in, uh, as, a, as an insect of concern. But uh, one, of, 
we, we have one um, Lumavia CPL site at Vulcan, Alberta, and uh, there was a, uh, a, a crop consultant that we were working with that, that, that came by when we were doing some ratings in the end of May, and he said, hey, would you come and look at this other field? I've got something to show you. And, and we pulled up to this uh, hard red spring wheat field a couple of miles away from our Lumavia CPL site, and it was interesting that the, the crop had emerged, it had been planted in, in mid-April, and it was almost browning off. Uh, the, you know, you could sort of see on, on hillsides that the crop was actually dying back. And uh, the, the agronomist uh, asked me, well, what do you think is going on here, Al? And, and I said, you know, I don't know, Let, let's go and have a look. And, and I, I dug up the first shovel full of dirt that you can see on the, on the left-hand side. And before I could get my, my iPhone up to take a picture, in that one shovel full of dirt, there was four or five wireworms that were actively eating. And it was interesting because that crop was treated with an insecticide seed treatment. It was treated with a, a product that was supposed to stop wireworms from feeding. And I tried to zoom in a little bit on the coleoptile to, 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 to see uh, a wireworm and to see some of the damage that was taking place. And it's, it's hard to see, and I'm not a very good photographer, but, but on that, that right-hand picture, you can see the wireworm present, and he's kind of trying to curl up and get out of the way. But... You can also see the coleoptile of the, uh, you know, the stem above the seed, where the wireworms have actually stripped out that uh, that uh, uh, plant material and that sheath along the coleoptile, and are doing significant damage. And and if somebody had asked me before that point what, uh, you know, the damage uh, is that that wireworms uh, do, I would say, well, uh, they 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 can, you know, you know, actually, you know. Uh, eat the uh, root and the stem material to the point where the plant would die back. But I, I never really thought about it. And, and if you look back at the left-hand side, you can see that the, that the leaves are actually starting to wilt and brown back. And what I, what I kind of realized at that point was, was even though that, that crop was treated with seed treatments, so it was treated with both a fungicide and an insecticide seed treatment, that the wireworms had damaged the plant enough that it had weakened the plant to the point where disease was starting to set in on that plant and the disease was actually what was causing the browning off and the, the wilting of that plant. And I'd never really you know, thought about disease as being a, a, you know, a, a function of, of plant mortality uh, as it re related to wireworm um, feeding before. And so that was a real aha that, that, that we found. Here again at Brock, Saskatchewan, you can see on the untreated side of our treatment, uh, just a perfect example of a fat wireworm that's, that's feeding right on the, on the seed and, uh, and you know, is ready to do a lot of damage there. And, and we all know that wireworms uh, can be in that larval form uh, for five or sometimes even six years. So if all we're doing is we're kind of, you know, disorienting them in crops, they will be around those very same wireworms for multiple years to feed on whatever crop you have uh, seeded there. Certainly they, they will, will feed on cereals, but they'll also feed on pulse crops as well. This year, uh, I had a great picture of uh, Milk River, Alberta, where um, uh, a farmer was seeding his field and he ran out of Lumavia CPL with only a couple passes left in the field. And uh, you can see uh, the wireworm control on the left-hand side of that picture. That crop is sown. Um, and on the right-hand side of the picture is the last pass where Lumavia CPL plus the fungicide seed treatment was used. So it was just incredible the level of, of, of control and protection that, that Lumavia CPL was providing. You can see where the wireworms are trying to get into the crop on that pass, but uh, the feeding, uh, I'm not saying that there's zero feeding there, but uh, the difference is night and day uh, uh, between the uh, treated and the untreated side. In lentils uh, with cutworms as well, we, we saw lots of different uh, examples in the check strips of, of uh, cutworm feeding. And, and, you know, it really amazes me that lentils and peas are so, so resilient in that uh, if you take a look on the left-hand side at Stewart Valley, that was a picture of that, that those lentils were actually treated with stress shield, but uh, cutworms had chewed uh, off the, those plants. Three different uh, uh, shoots had come off, come up out of the seed, had been chewed off by the cutworms, and it was trying a fourth time to get out of the ground. And by the time that fourth stem is coming out of that seed after being chewed off three different times, it really makes you wonder what kind of uh, vigor that plant is gonna have, 
is it going to be, be able to, you know, set seed uh, in as strong of a way as, a, you know, a crop that hadn't been chewed on. And uh, on the right hand side, you can see more examples of cutworm damage and, and them chewing that, chewing those, those lentil shoots off. So um, pretty impactful. That very same lentil crop here, uh, this was later on in July. Uh, the, the picture on the right shows, uh, uh, you know, the line in the field between the treated and the untreated. And, uh, you know, the, the lack of plant stand, the plants dying back from cutworm uh, infestation and some wireworms are just really night and day next to the Lumavia CPL. On the left-hand side, you can see what it looked like from the granular uh, satellite imagery. So the NDVI picture that, that shows what the, what the uh, plant density is uh, from the satellite photographs. You can actually see the 80 acre piece that was treated with Lumavia CPL on the very far right-hand side of the picture. And there's a, a, a very, very noticeable line in the, in the uh, plant density where it drops right off with yellow being low plant density and the darker blue meaning a higher plant density. And, and it was interesting when we, when we treated this field, we actually had uh, uh, the, the grower didn't do a headland. He seeded up and down, down the field until he was done with uh, the lentils treated with Lumavia CPL and then he switched to the standard uh, stress shield uh, treatment. And then uh, when he was done seeding the field, he came back and he did the headlands. And the headlands are even showing up in this picture as being lower uh, density, low, lower crop density at the top and bottom, even on the Lumavia CPL side because they weren't treated. And uh, you can actually see where the, where the treatment starts and ends uh, on all sides of the field. So I thought that was very interesting. This is some of the research pictures that we did with lentils uh, and Lumavia CPL. So, so at 40 grams, uh, which is uh, uh, the use rate in uh, Western Canada, you can see compared to the untreated check only what uh, the above ground feeding was like uh, in, in, in those uh, research demonstrations uh, with lentils. So uh, the couplings were just completely annihilating the lentils and, uh, that weren't treated and leaving the ones alone that were treated with uh, Lumavia. Tea leaf weevil is another uh, interesting insect that uh, we're starting to get more attention, especially in Alberta, although in southern Saskatchewan, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a problem as well. And I was able to find a picture of uh, what uh, pea leaf weevil damage looks like uh, on the top side of the plant in the, in the sense that the pea leaf weevil uh, was, you know, that's what uh, the leaf feeding looks like on the top end of the plant. The interesting piece is though, is, is that the real damage is going on under the ground uh, in, in the root level where the pea leaf weevil actually will feed on the, on the nodules and, and reduce the plant's ability to fix nitrogen. And that uh, inability to fix nitrogen in a, in a high population of pea leaf weevil really affects uh, you know, the pea's ability to, to grow a healthy plant and to, and to set seed properly. So, Controlling those pea leaf weevils will make a significant impact on yield, a positive impact. So in 2019, because we had a early registration in April, we were able to go out with a, a demonstration program across Western Canada. And uh, because we didn't need to operate under a research authorization license and, and, the, and the product was fully uh, registered, we were able to, to really expand our, our demonstration program. We did uh, pea, lentil, barley, spring wheat, and durum wheat. We worked under lots of different weather conditions. Like I said, we started on April 10th and we went right to the end of May treating. We used lots of different uh, seed treating systems. We did uh, you know, as simple as gravity feed uh, into an auger uh, uh, treating on farm, right up to a commercial grade KSI system uh, that, was, uh, that was on a portable treater. Uh, we used lots of different fungicide tank mix partners. In wheat, we used Vibrance Quattro, Insure Serial, and Roxel Pro. In pulses, we used Vibrance Pulse, Insure Pulse, uh, and Trilex Evergo. Um, so what we we're really looking for was, is Lumavia CPO going to properly mix into these fungicide seed treatments? Is there going to be any problem in applying uh, Lumavia CPO with these seed treatments? Is there going to be any problems in cleaning out your treater when you're done? or will there be any flowability issues or anything like that with the crop? And uh, 
I'm very pleased to say that out of all 25 of those sites, we had no mixing, flowability, or clean out issues uh, over, over all 21 final sites. We did 25 sites total, but we lost some sites due to drought and to uh, other environmental conditions. But uh, it, was, it was really a positive demonstration program in 2019. So I showed you this map before of the of the uh, uh, Ag Canada uh, study that was done from 04 to 17, and on the on the left or on the right, sorry, you can see uh, little hearts uh, on the map here is where we did all of our demonstration sites that year. So we really tried to focus on the heavy wireworm uh, 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 population zones, and that's where we focused our demonstration program on. We followed up uh, with, the, with the farmers at the time of treating and then 30 days after planting. Um, and what we would do is we would uh, sample in four different sides of the field, both in the treated side and the untreated side where we would do plant counts. And we would actually take physical uh, uh, plant samples and wash the roots off, uh, photograph them against the whiteboard and have a, have a good look at them. And this was just one example of hard red springweed in the Brandon, Brandon hard red spring, springweed in the uh, Brock area. And uh, this was 30 days after treatment. In the Lumavia CPL side, uh, as compared to the untreated side, there was 55% more plants in the Lumavia CPL side in July, 2019. And at the end at harvest time, there was a 9% yield improvement. What I really thought was incredible though, is going again to that granular satellite imagery, um, the granular platform, granular insights gave us a, a look at the field. And uh, on that 160 acre field, uh, right on into July, you could see uh, the bottom heavy blue area there was the split between the treated and the untreated uh, part of the field. And, and again, that 55% more plants is clearly visible as a line in the field where the Lumavia CPL started and uh, where the untreated side of the field was. So that was a very successful site. And that was wireworm damage on that field. Here's just another few examples. Uh, Spring Coulee, Alberta, you, you, you know, the satellite imagery really shouts out at you uh, in, in spring wheat as well. You can tell exactly where the Lumavia was. And again, the small green lentils in Stewart Valley, I showed you that picture already. In 2020, we actually, uh, this year, we, we launched the, the product. Uh, we had limited product available, but one thing that we did do is we wanted to expand our target geography in Western Canada and, and get, uh, you know, there was a high demand for cutworm control uh, basically all across the prairies, and it was a very, very high cutworm year. Uh, Corteva territory managers and agronomists worked with growers, retails, and consultants to make demonstration product available. And we made 76 different demonstration packages were applied in Western Canada. Um, they were basically 90 bushel packages where we would uh, get the grower to, uh, you know, use it, start a field out, treat until, uh, you know, treat seed, um, you know, seed until that seed was done and then switch over. There was lots of different application systems and fungicide tank mix partners. There was no issues again with the formulation, mixing or application. And right now we're in the, in the process of, of collecting pictures, videos, plant count data, granular satellite imagery, and again, anecdotal yield information. Uh, we have to be a little bit careful about the yield information because it's not a research program. It's just a demonstration program and we're getting growers to tell us exactly what they saw on their yield monitors and, and that sort of thing. All of this information will be collected and, and available uh, you know, to Corteva Territory Managers and Agronomists after harvest. So again, I wanted to show you that field at Milk River, Alberta from this spring. This was a Lumavia CPL use and learn site as well. And you can see exactly on the satellite imagery where the grower ran out of uh, Lumavia CPL treated seed. And that yellow bar, uh, uh, was uh, you know, photographed by the satellite on, on uh, July 16th here, just the other day. This picture, of course, was taken a little bit earlier. It was taken, uh, taken in June, but right on up to this period, there, there's almost a complete absence of crop uh, you know, where there was no Lumavia CPL. And that is mainly wireworms in, in this picture that were found. There is some cutworms as well. So why should Lumavia CPL be on my radar? Um, it's a brand new mode of in insecticide technology. It stops insects faster than the old insecticide seed treatment, and it actually does prevent the buildup of insect populations in the soil. 
At the current time, it is the best available control measure for wireworm in cereal pea and lentil. Uh, it actually does provide some mortality of wireworms. Uh, we've done some cage testing with, with wireworms and we are showing an actual mortality level. It doesn't, con it doesn't uh, kill all of the wireworms that are treated, but it does far, far better than any of the other treatments that are out there. It is the only treatment that offers cutworm control in cereals and pulses, and it is registered for commercial and on-farm application. It's tank mixable with all cereal and pulse uh, fungicide seed treatments on the market. And again, low use rates, safe to the user and non-target pests. If you are using Lumivia CPL with, uh, uh, on your peas or lentils, it is compatible uh, with uh, the, 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 the highest used uh, liquid inoculants and granu granular inoculants and peat inoculants that are on the, on the uh, EUs on the prairies and they, Lumavia CPL will be on the compatibility charts. I know for sure with BASF and uh, Monsanto Bio, BioAg, and there may be other testing done with other inoculant brands uh, into next year. Just wanted to include a rate chart here, giving you an idea of, of how many bushels for each crop a three and a half liter jug of Lumavia CPL treats. So for all wheat and durum and lentils, 320 bushels, for barley, 400 bushels, for oats, 600 bushels, and then for peas at that high rate for the pea leaf weevil control, it treats, it treats 200, uh, 200 bushels. So just a few more uh, pictures here of, of the comparisons uh, from the randomly selected uh, samples uh, in, the, in the 2019 research program. Again, we can see just a significant difference in the growth stage of, of the peas as compared to uh, the standard insecticide seed treatment and lots of different pictures of that. This uh, being of course brown and spring wheat again uh, with stress shield as a, uh, as a comparison. The Lumavia CPL 2019 demo program really proved that crops that are treated with Lumavia CPL emerge up to two days faster than untreated crops and have a minimum of a 15% higher plant stand density than untreated crops do. Um, you might remember last year in, in southwestern Saskatchewan and southern Alberta, it was horribly dry. It was bad emergence conditions and, and anything that slows down the ability of the crop to emerge properly uh, really, uh, really gives insects a, a, a leg up in, in uh, not allowing the crop you know, time to get established and, and to get out of the danger zone for insects. And, and this yellow pea crop at Brock was actually in the ground 10 days and it really only just absorbed enough moisture to start germinating and start pushing, uh, you know, shoots upwards. And you can see the difference uh, between the untreated and the Lumavia CPL. Um, just a lot more vigorous plant and, and faster out of the ground. Just want to give you a picture here of uh, what uh, the product looks like when it's treated with uh, Vibrance Quattro. Lumavia CPL is milky in the jug. It's a white, uh, very, uh, you know, like I say, milky uh, product, but it treats onto the seed clear. We do recommend that uh, growers always use a fungicide seed treatment with Lumavia CPL. We feel that the best chance for, for a vigorous, healthy crop is to control both fungus and insects at the same time. And as such, Lumavia CPL does not contain any dye. So according to the PMRA rules, uh, all seed that is uh, treated must have a dye present. So we recommend always using a, a fungicide seed treatment. It doesn't matter what brand, but that fungicide seed treatment will have a dye with it. And then the Lumavia CPL uh, can be applied on as well. And that's really what I wanted to share. I see we're about uh, 40 minutes in. Um, is there any questions that anyone has? It, I, I'm not seeing any uh, notes on the, uh, on the Q&A side here, um, but feel free to speak up if you've got any, any questions. Yeah, thanks, Alan. If anybody has any questions, you can just put your hand up and we can unmute you and you can speak your question or if you'd like to type it in the chat as well you can do that too oh there's one there the question 
are there any further registrations coming? Yes, we're, we are currently working on, um, on adding other insects to the label. I can't really say what those are going to be yet, but uh, they are insects that uh, do affect Western Canada and we we are working on on adding insects to that label i don't believe at the current time that there'll be any crops added uh, to, to the label uh, lumavia active ingredient is used in corn in western canada uh, although it's a slightly different formulation and rate in corn than uh, than lumavia cpl is in european lentil so stay tuned there there will be further registrations coming with this product So just as a, just as a note, I'd said the uh, the Lumavia CPL was registered in April of 2019, but fully launched uh, with a limited product launch uh, in the spring of 2020, and uh, we we've had some great results with it. We 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 sold out of uh, uh, out of Lumavia CPL this spring, and and really gave growers, custom uh, seed treaters, uh, retailers, consultants, uh, everybody a chance to get a good look at the product. And uh, we're very excited for uh, what we're seeing, and we, we will have more products available to sell next year. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Alan. If nobody else has any other questions now, you can always visit the Corteva virtual booth in the exhibitor showcase. Oh, we have one more question. Okay. Just came in. Oh, sorry. Wireworms had some time to begin building populations after the loss of previous control. How, how big is the issue? So that's the question. I would say it's a huge issue and it just keeps getting worse every year because there's nothing that really, uh, really is able to, uh, you know, reduce populations of those pests up to this point. Uh, and in all different crops, that's, uh, that, that's an issue. So uh, I don't know how we would quantify it, but we do know that uh, based on that 2004 to 2017 P, uh, research, uh, uh, Ag Canada research project that was done, that that uh, affected area for wireworm has grown uh, from a geographic standpoint. And uh, it's getting to the point where, I know early in my career, you would really never hear people talk a lot about wireworm control, limiting the, the ability of the crop to establish, or you know, it was very, very rare where people had to reseed. And we are seeing more examples of that all the time. So I don't know whether I really answered your question or not, but uh, it's going to be a long road in, in, in controlling wireworms. And it is a, a major high anxiety insect, not just in Western Canada, but in the States and, and other parts of the world as well. Not really seeing any other questions coming up here, Emma, or yeah, um, yep. I think that's good. I think I was just saying before that if anybody else has any other questions, um, they can reach out to you on the platform as well um, and just go to the Corteva virtual booth. And there's information on that as well. Um, okay. So if nobody else has any other questions, we can end the session. Thanks so much, everyone, for joining and thanks, Alan, for, for doing this for us. 100%. Thank you, Emma, and thank you, everyone, for giving us uh, some time to talk about uh, this new product. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Bye, Bye now.